Are you ready to unleash your inner mad scientist and create something truly extraordinary? Introduce the Voron printers, the ultimate tools for turning your wildest 3D printing dreams into reality. But before we start building, make sure you have your lab coat, goggles, and a sense of humor ready because this journey is not for the faint hearted. It takes lots of research, patience, and willingness to learn new things, but trust me, I've been 3D printing for several years now and I am learning something new every single day. But don't let that discourage you, the reward is definitely worth it. With features like Core XY, stationary beds, to printers that can fit inside of printers, the possibilities are truly endless. The Voron team is a development team that aims to create high quality, easy to use 3D printers with quotations that are aesthetically looking. They took several years to develop with a focus of quiet operation, cleanliness, and speed and quality. After its release, the community formed around the projects and continued to support and contribute to its development. All of these engineers have the same sharing design philosophy dedicated to creating production quality printers that can be assembled at home and push the boundaries of what is possible with 3D printing. The Voron project is a challenging and time-consuming project that requires a significant investment in both time and money. Building a Voron is not for the casual hobbyist. It requires a certain level of technical expertise and willingness to invest the necessary materials and equipment. To build a Voron, you will need a 3D printer that is capable of printing ABS, such as a trash bag and an Ender 3, I guess. I'm kidding. Don't, don't take my word on that, or a similar high quality machine. You will also need at least two to three kilograms of ABS filament to print all the parts and tune your ABS filament if you haven't used ABS at all. This may seem like a lot of filament, but it is necessary to ensure that the printer is built to the highest standards of quality and durability. The Voron project is not quick or easy to build. It takes a lot of time and patience to assemble all the parts correctly but the end result is definitely worth it as you will have a production quality 3D printer that is designed to last and provide you with years of reliable service. Know before you start building, make sure you read the manual several times and check out the Ellis Print Tuning Guide for some tips and tricks. It is a great guide for that purpose. Rigidity and squareness are key during the initial stages, so don't skimp on the tools. Make sure you are tightening all of the bolts that are supposed to get tightened and what Loctite goes on where and what bolts. A half inch torque wrench is not necessary because you will then turn your threads into holes for your bolts. The building process can be quite challenging, but don't worry, there are plenty of videos and guides online to help you along the way. Even take a look at your Fusion 360 file, which is a free software you can download to view the printer in a CAD software, and even move parts around to see how many washers go on that Z motor, or how many heat inserts are where. That gives you a little bit depth of feel if you're having difficulties looking at the manual. So you're gonna wanna use this to your advantage because if you miss a part, technically that one's on you because all of the parts are in the Fusion file. So you can take apart every single part and look and see where it is at. But keep in mind there are different versions of the printer that have different assembly guides and a couple different parts. So if you have the 2.4 R2, get the 2.4 R2 manual and parts. If you have the 2.4, get the 2.4 manual and parts. If you're building a 2.4, but running off of the R2 manual and R2 parts, you're gonna have to mix some variety. So wiring is a very important step in building the Voron to be sure that you know the main aspects of wiring before you start this, because it's very important that you do not fry and or injure yourself doing said wiring. I would suggest getting a tool head board for your extruder because it will help you kind of manage the wires around there, give it a little bit more cleaner look. And it seems a bit easier to work on things too, that way you're not fiddling with five different wires and what is what connector, everything's labeled, wires are short, and you know what is what. The wiring can be a little interesting and tricky to figure out at first, but once you've done it once, then you understand how it all ran because on the tool high board there's a single 24 volt line that I have connected to one of my heater terminals on my octopus board. If you guys want to see a video on how to wire that up, I can make a video on that, show you the diagrams that I've found on the internet and go more in depth about that. Once you're at that stage, you're pretty much done with your build, then it's just time to tune. Lots and lots and lots of logging into putty, updating the pie, installing this, installing that. That's a video in depth on itself because that is such a long process that isn't the funnest part because you're sitting there copy paste copy paste 
that's where fun doesn't arise, I will say. But once you finally get that done, then you just start your tuning guide. Once your printer is updated, everything is working, you've homed all your accesses, you've done your first quad gantry level, your bed mesh, your bed's looking a little taco-y, that's fine. Oh, well, if your bed's really taco-y, that's not fine. You might have to adjust your linear rails a little bit to kind of compensate for that, but it should not be like really bad. I would say maybe point one is like eh, something might be wrong but it's okay but like here's my bed mesh is an adaptive bed mesh this is mine so if i have a small calibration cube it won't bed mesh if i have five calibration cube it will do a small bed mesh that way it kind of compensates for the time and you can get a little bit better of a bed mesh because those pro points are a lot closer to each other it gives you more of a high resolution it's like taking a picture from a satellite closer than a satellite from farther away essentially but once you have your first print done, then it is time to eat your bowl of cereal that Voron tells you to eat and enjoy your first Benchy and or calibration cube. After several tunings and you'll start to realize how to push your printer to the limit, then you can calibrate your input shaper, which is using an accelerometer on your tool head and calibrates frequencies to find the best frequency and type of acceleration that we'll use, such as mine is MZV at like suggested 3000 for the y and like 7000 for the x it's not the highest numbers for the war on i might still have to tweak some things but i'm also pushing some limits with it's not a you know ldo kit it's a four mark kit so there's little differences but i might make a second video if you guys want to see a second video on this about what i did about more in depth of installing things and doing what and how to do like certain the adaptive bed mesh or the clicky probe or other things which here is some clicky probe footage i don't think i recorded any until now because it's been like two weeks since this video's been in the making it's taking so long but yeah that's the clicky probe it is pretty cool but if you guys want to see stuff like that and how to install that and do certain things on the printer just let me know in the comments and i will gladly make a video on that so tell me what you guys thought of this video thumbs up thumbs down what could have been better i'll be off to install more mods like the purge bucket on the voron so still many more mods to do just kind of figuring out all the fancy new stuff with the printer that i didn't have on my previous voron and it's nice to see how all the mods are starting to come together and cool things that are on the voron are now becoming like more recommended like a clicky probe rather than using a inductive probe it's just very neat seeing how the community is all coming together but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you made it this far let me know what you guys want to see in the future and i will catch you guys in the next one